well, what were they going to do? Well, originally, it was a mil uh, military installation was used for direction of the space flight. Well, in 1958, NASA was created, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And its very first director was a German scientist that created the B-2, Werner von Braun. So here we have a picture of Alan Shepard, the first American in space. And he's standing in front of his Mercury capsule. He was part of the Mercury program, which is a program to launch one man into space at a time. So this particular capsule is known as the Freedom 7, and it was launched on a redstone rocket. Later, after the Mercury project came Gemini, which launched two people, and then after Gemini came Apollo. Now Apollo, of course, is famous for taking men to the moon. And here we have a picture of the Saturn V rocket, which is what carried it there. Now the Saturn V rocket, if you look about here, is where the space capsule, where the actual astronauts were. So we have rocket taking up people and carrying the command module. Now, the rocket was a stage rocket, so once it finally got up to space, there was not much of the rocket left. There was a command module, and the command module is what brought and carried the LEM, which is our vehicle right here, which stands for the Lunar Excursion Module, to the moon, where it was able to descend to the moon, and people were able to get out and walk around. Now, after the Apollo project was done, we have the Skylab mission, and the Skylab mission was to build a space station in outer space and Earth orbit. After Skylab, the goal was to have a reusable uh, vehicle to enter space, and that's where we end up with our space shuttle. Now, the space shuttle is unique in that it is a glider attached to the solid rocket boosters and the main fuel tank. So, this has managed to take us into Earth orbit, but it's not made to go to the moon. And since we're planning on going back to the moon and eventually on the Mars, we need something different. So by the year 2020, the hope is that the shuttle will be retired and we will have the Ares. Now the Ares 5 is our larger rocket here, which is used as a cargo carrier. That is to take cargo simply into Earth orbit. Once there, it can rendezvous with Ares 1, the smaller rocket here, which is what will carry the actual crew. And Here's a projected picture of what the Aries want to look like when it's launched. Now, this is a, uh, so far we've been talking about people being launched into space, but that's not the only thing that rockets are used for. Or, we're talking about people going to space. And to carry the people there, you actually have a part of the rocket that's habitable. Now, here, which is a little bit like the Apollo Command Module, this is actually the Orion spacecraft. Instead of being built for three people like the Apollo, it is built for four to six astronauts. Mm -hmm. And you can see it, well, it's slightly larger, obviously. Uh, better electronics, and, but one of the similarities between this and the Apollo capsule is that it's also made for water landing. So we're going back towards the Apollo era, and we're gonna have a splashdown. Um, so you can see the capsule itself, disconnect. It'll have a heat shield underneath, like the Apollo capsule. It'll come back to the atmosphere, parachutes will be deployed, and it'll have a nice, safe landing in the ocean. So, those are the, the human exploits in space. Thankfully, rockets are also used to carry things up, like satellites for our cell phones and GPS. Uh, one of the new things, one of the exciting things that's going to be going up is the James Webb Space Telescope. Now, James Webb was the director of NASA during the Apollo project. That's what this telescope is named after. Now, the telescope itself is mainly an infrared telescope, but it does have some optical capabilities. Uh, the mirror here, the gold on top, is 6.5 meters, and it has a, a solar shield, a sun shield, that's about the size of a tennis court. It's a thing right here. Now, the sun shield is used to protect the delicate instruments from any radiation that is found in the universe. And the sun shield itself is folded up here, but once it leaves the rocket, the sun shield will be unfolded and will be deployed. So, with that, I would like to turn it over to John McClure, who will give you some of the physics of rocketry. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
All right. Well, the physics of rocketry is governed by basic Newtonian mechanics. Uh, Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, in a rocket, we can see that superheated gas is expelled out of the bag, which generates the reaction of the rocket moving forward. Another interesting thing that happens while rockets are in flight is that uh, the, uh, the, the amount of mass that the rocket loses by burning all of this fuel actually lightens the rocket, which makes it easier to push along. Now, uh, thrust, is the, the force of a, of a rocket is measured in, in thrust, which is measured in newtons. Uh, the amount of force that is uh, put on a rocket over the entire course of its flight is called impulse, which is measured in the amount of force times the amount of time it's applied. Now, strength here uh, will have about a thousand newtons of peak thrust. Oh, whereas the Frozen Fury rocket over here has about 400 newtons. Larger rockets, especially when you're getting into uh, stuff that NASA would use, uh, will have uh, 30,000 newtons or more. Now, let's take a look at this video here. Uh, the NAR is the 